All right then gang, so in this video, we're gonna set up our Dino server right here and a base route handler, which is gonna be used to serve up the HTML page we have over here to the browser. And we're also gonna flesh that HTML page out and style that a little bit too. Now, I am gonna be moving quite quickly through this step because I'm assuming you already kind of understand how to do this. If you don't and you want to learn Dino first from the ground up and how all this works, check out my Dino Jumpstart tutorial first of all. The link is going to be down below, then come back here. So then the first thing we want to do is grab something from the standard library to create this server. So head to the standard library by clicking this, then choose the HTTP module and then scroll down. This is the thing we need down here, this import. So we're importing serve from this file and then we use that serve function to create a server. So I'm gonna say set up server and then I'll create a constant called server to store this in and set it equal to serve, which is the function we just imported. Then we pass in an object to specify the port number, which in our case is gonna be 3000. Then I'm gonna say console.log and I'm just gonna log to the console the web address we need to go to to access this website. So localhost 3000. So now I need to run this file and I'm gonna use Denon to do that instead of Dino. Denon is a third party package, a bit like Nodemon for Node. It allows us to make changes to our code and when we save those changes, Denon detects those and it reruns the server and the file so that we don't need to do that manually every time we make a change. So I go through it more extensively in my Dino Jumpstart tutorial, so definitely check out that if you wanna learn more. But if you go to third party modules and search for Denon, it's this one right here, scroll down and it shows you how to install it right here. So once you've done that, we can say, Denon and then run a file. Now we need to pass in a couple of permission flags. The first is gonna be the network permission because we need to allow access to the network. And the second one is allow read to allow the script to read this file over here because it's gonna send that to the browser. So hyphen hyphen allow hyphen net and then hyphen hyphen allow hyphen read and then the file name app.ts, awesome. Okay, so now we see this logged to the console and we could make requests to this, but at the minute, nothing is gonna happen because we're not responding to those requests. So let's set up our response loop now. So we use an asynchronous loop to respond to requests on this server. And that looks like this, for await, and then inside here we say const request of server. And then inside we can respond to any request that comes in on the server. So this is an asynchronous for loop right here. So the first thing I wanna do is check the URL of the request because I only wanna send back the index page if they just go to forward slash, not forward slash about or something else. So I need to check that and I can check the URL on this request object. So I'll say serve index page right here. Then I'll do an if check if request.url is equal to dot forward slash, then I want to open up this file. So let's do that. I'm gonna say request dot respond to send a response to the browser. Inside here, I'm gonna say the status code is 200, meaning everything is okay. Then the body of the response, the actual thing we're sending back to the browser is going to be the web page. Now we need to grab and open this to send it back. So this is asynchronous, we use a wait, then dino.open to open up the file. Then we wanna say dot forward slash into the public folder and then index.html. So this grabs the file and it sends it back as the body of the response. So now if I save this, it restarts the server. If I come over here and refresh, then we see the home page right here, awesome. If I go to another URL like about, then it's not gonna send that back, only if I just go to the root of the domain, so just forward slash, and this works. All right then, so next up, we wanna flesh out this HTML page a little bit more, so let's go to that index file over here, and I'm gonna grab that, I'm gonna cut it, because we're gonna paste it somewhere else in a minute. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a div with a class of container and this container is ultimately gonna keep everything within a central column. Then inside here, I'm gonna paste that H1 again. Now, 
We need two forms. We need a form to enter in our name when we first enter the page, and then later on also a form to add a new message to the chat. So let's do the first one. So form, and then I'll give this a class of name hyphen form. And we don't need an action right here, but we do need to open this up and add an input inside it. So input, and I'm gonna say that this is of type text. I'm also going to give this a name equal to nickname, and we'll use this in the JavaScript later on to grab the value. Then I'm gonna say the placeholder is equal to choose nickname, like so. And also this is gonna be required. All right, so that's the input sorted. Now below that, we just need a button as well. So button, and we'll just say enter chat. So they type in a name and then they click on the button to enter the chat. So that's the first form done. Now the second one is gonna go inside the chat room itself. So let's create that first. I'm gonna say div, and I'm gonna give this div a class of chat room, and also a class of, in fact, just chat room will be good enough for now. We'll apply more classes later. Okay, so inside there, I want to output a UL and some LI tags, and each LI tag is gonna be a different message in the chat room. So later on, they'll be dynamically generated when we get into WebSockets, but for now, we'll just hard code one of them. So UL, and then give this a class of chat list, and inside that we want our first message, which is an LI tag. Then each message is gonna have a name, so who sent the message, and also the message itself. So let's do a div for the name, give that a class of name, and inside we'll say Yoshi sent this, and then below that we'll do another div with a class of message, and this is for the actual message itself, and we'll just say hey all for now, awesome. All right, so below that UL, this is where we want the next form, and this form is gonna be used to send new chat messages. So I'm gonna do another form tag, give this a class of chat hyphen form, and then we don't need an action again, because we'll be using JavaScript to send this. And then down here, we're gonna say inputs, and this is also of type text. This time, the name is gonna be equal to message, and then the placeholder will be equal to type message, dot, dot, dot. And also this is required, so they can't send blank messages. All right, so again, we need a button, and we'll just say send on that button, awesome. So I think that is pretty much it for the HTML. So let's save that and a refresh over here. And we can see that looking really cruddy. So let's now apply some CSS to this. So first of all, I wanna use a custom Google font. So I've already found one over here in Google fonts. It's called Inter. And I wanna just grab a few of these different styles. Let's go for regular and we'll go for bold and I think that'll probably do to be honest. Let's now go to embed this and I wanna grab this link over here. So let's go over here and go to the top and I wanna paste this under the title. So now we can use this custom font called Inter in our styles. So what I'm gonna do is just paste a few of these styles in at a time from my repo so that you don't have to watch me type out a load of different CSS rules because that's not what you're here to do, but I will quickly go through each one. So I'm gonna copy them like three or four at a time and just go through them. So first of all, the body, give this a background of a light gray and a bit of a margin around all edges. Then apply this font family of inter to the body, the buttons and inputs. Then for the H1, we're gonna say text align center, color it a dark gray, bit of margin at the bottom and padding at the bottom as well. We also give this a border at the bottom, which is a very, very subtle gray. So the container, which is this thing surrounding everything, that has a max width of 960 pixels, margin zero and auto left and right, meaning it's gonna put this 960 width column in the center of the page. Background is white and then the padding is 30 pixels. Border radius 10 to soften up the corners and then a border also of one pixel, which is a light gray. So if I save this and come over here and refresh, it's gonna to start to look a bit better. Okay, so there's the first few styles. Let me now just grab the next few. So copy and paste those over here, like so. And by the way, I'll leave the link to the exact CSS file down here so you can grab them all. So first of all, we have the name form and the chat form. That was the two different forms down here so we're styling those together first of all displaying them as flex and justifying the content to the center so the elements sit next to each other the input and the button and they sit in the middle so that's those two the inputs we're giving padding increasing the font size 
giving it a bit of margin right, giving it a border of a light grey and a border radius as well. Pretty much the same for the button. Increase the font size, bit of padding, the background of this blue colour. The colour of the text is white, zero border, but again soften up the corners with border radius. The curse is the pointer, which is that little hand thing. So again, let's save and refresh. This should start to look a bit better. Yep, almost there. So now let me grab the last few and paste those in over here. Now we have the chat list, which is this UL down here. And we're seeing right here, strip away the padding, all of the LIs inside that, we're going to give a margin of 16 pixels, top and bottom, zero left and right, list style type of none, so we get rid of those little circles right here. And then after that, the chat list name, which is this, is going to be this color in text, for the text, font size of 1.4 M's and also bold. Then the chat list message is going to be slightly smaller, but still increased. And then the margin top is going to be four pixels. So save that and refresh. And this is starting to look a bit better. So later we'll have multiple messages down here. Now there's one more thing I want to do, and that is to hide all of this stuff, the chat room and this form, because when a user first lands on the page, I only want to show this thing right here. Then when they enter in some kind of name and click enter chat, we're going to hide this and then show this. But to begin with, all of this stuff here should be hidden. So I'm going to create now also a hidden class, which is going to make sure that whatever has that class is display none. So down here, we can then say that this chat room is going to have the hidden class to begin with. If we save that and come over here and refresh, then we don't see that to begin with. Later on in JavaScript, we'll remove that class after we enter a name and enter the chat. But for now, that's how I want it to look. All right, so that's looking all right. In the next lesson, we're going to set up our WebSocket connection between the browser and the server.